Welcome to the first video on the FC Editor Complete Guide series, where I'll be explaining everything you need to know about making custom Future Cop levels in FC Editor. For this video, I'll be showing you how to get started using the level editor. Please note that the level editor is still in development and things are subject to change. The version used in this video is 0.2. Be sure to check out any update showcase videos to see what's changed. Other than that, here's how to get started and familiar with FC Editor. To get the editor, go to the FC3D Editor GitHub page and look for a tab that says Tags on the right side of the page. Click into the newest version and then scroll down to the bottom of the page. Download the RAR file listed below, and then once downloaded, move the RAR folder to wherever you'd like and then extract the files. Once the files are extracted, click into the folder and open the FC3D Editor.exe file. The editor will now launch up and play the forced Made in Unity logo that we all know and love until it reaches the home screen. From here, we have a couple of options. Open level to open an existing Future Cop level, create level to create a custom level from scratch using a template, and settings. If you click open level, you'll notice that there's nothing here. To fix this, we need to grab existing Future Cop levels and drop them in the mission files folder in the editor's directory. By default, Future Cop mission files are in program files x86, Electronic Arts, Future Cop, and Missions. Grab any mission file that you would like to add, or just all of them, and drag them into the Mission Files folder in the Editor directory. After that, if you hit Open Level, you'll now see the mission files that we just put into the folder. But before jumping into a level, let's take a look at the settings. To the left, there's a keybind menu to change keybinds. You can also use this to understand what keybinds the editor has. To the right, there is a mouse sensitivity, render mode, field of view, and scale. Render mode refers to how the textures are rendered, either smooth or pixelated. Scale refers to the UI scale, and this is useful if you have high resolution monitors. Backing out, let's actually open a level. For this video, I'll be opening up LA Cantina, which the file name is MP. On screen, I'll show a list of all file names compared to their game names. Click on the file and then hit open. Now that we are loaded in, hit the middle mouse button to enable free look, and hit it again to disable it. You can also hold to free look by using mouse 3. To move around, use the WASD keys, and use Q and E to go up or down. Note that these movements are relative to the camera's facing. To the left side here is our edit mode toolbar, and the top bar is the tools used by the edit mode. By default, it starts with height map edit mode. Top left is debug position data, and the bottom of the screen shows a compass showing the camera's facing. To quickly jump to a point on the map, disable free look and then hit F1. The camera will teleport to the position of the cursor. Like mentioned earlier, the edit mode toolbar can be found on the left side of the screen. Edit modes are for editing specific areas of a future cop level. For example, height map edit mode for editing the level's height map, or for actor edit mode to edit the level's actors. Starting from top to bottom, height map edit mode is used for editing the level's height map. A more common way of describing what this mode does is edit the level's vertices. Below that is tile editing mode. Tiles are what make up the level and connect to the height map. A more common way of describing tiles are faces. Tile add mode is for creating new tiles. It also contains schematics for copying portions of the level and pasting them. Texture edit mode is for modifying tiles, UVs, and more. Shader edit mode is for modifying tiles vertex colors. Section edit mode is for managing sections. Sections are 16 by 16 tile areas. Navigation mesh edit mode is for editing actors navigation. And finally, actor edit mode. Actors are game objects. They are pretty much everything that isn't level geometry. Future guides will go into detail on how these modes work. Below all the edit modes are two buttons. The first one is to open the asset manager. The Asset Manager shows all the level's assets, and this includes audio files, textures, 3D models, and more. The Asset Manager is still in development, so look out for more of that in future videos. Below the Asset Manager is called Play Mode. This mode mimics Future Cop's cameras to show how levels will look in-game. Use this to get a good reference on how maps will look and feel in-game. To leave Play Mode, hit Escape. Doing that will also pull up the Escape menu. Going over the escape menu, we have resume for returning to the level, and below that an option for view. Clicking view will open a side panel for some options. 
Show Shaders shows Tile's vertex coloring. Disabling this option will prevent Tile vertex colors from rendering. Below that is turning on or off Tile transparency and Tile animations. Render Directional Light is for rendering shadows onto a level. This is very helpful when creating a level with no textures or vertex colors as the level can be very hard to see. The sliders can be changed for which direction the light will be coming from. Moving past the view panel is the level panel. Calculate culling is used to calculate the correct render distance for each section. However, this is done automatically, so you don't need to worry about this button. Discard heights is a very specific case used for making sure that all unused vertices on a level are set to their lowest points. The reason for this is because flying actors use this height map as a reference for how high they should fly. Unused vertices that are too high can cause actors to be too high up. Moving past the level panel is settings for changing the settings while in the editor. There are two options for saving and opening presets. Presets will be explained more in future videos, but briefly, they are saved chunks of data to be reused throughout the level. For example, texture presets used for pasting textures onto other tiles. Below presets is save and compile. Save is used to save a level editor file called a non-compressed future cop file. These files are only readable by the editor and provide more information than a future cop mission file. Compile is used to create a future cop mission file. The important difference is that an NCFC file will store presets and asset names, while a mission file cannot. It also stores other information like actor groups. Exit to main menu will bring you back to the home page. Leaving the escape menu, there are a couple keybinds used to quickly access edit modes and the escape menu options. To change edit mode, hit left control and the number the edit mode is in order. For example, Control 1 for height map edit mode, Control 2 for tile edit mode, and so on. F5 is used for saving a level, and F9 is used for compiling a level. FC Editor features an autosave that will periodically save to create a backup, just in case something happens. Now that's pretty much it for an editor overview. Don't worry if a lot of this didn't make sense or was glanced over. Each guide will go into deeper detail on how to use all of the editor's features. But for now, you should be able to use the editor and play around with it a little bit. In the next video, I will be talking about how to start modeling levels. So I'll see you guys there.